This is our section on solving rational equations. They're rational because they're fractions and they're equations, so we want to know what x is equal to. As I look at this problem, I'm going to compare the denominators. Right now, they both have a 2x in common, so I could rewrite the 4x as 2x times 2. And then what I'm going to do is take care of getting rid of all these denominators. Rather than finding a common denominator and working with fractions, we are going to multiply everything on both sides by something so that there's no more denominators in the problem. First off, let's multiply all these numerators by 2x. And what that accomplishes for us is it gets rid of this first denominator, and it's even going to get rid of this denominator. And so our first term is no longer a fraction. The second one still is a fraction with a denominator of 2. So we're going to multiply all of our numerators by 2. And the purpose of this is to get rid of this denominator. So now as I look at this problem, there's no more denominators. So we can look at just this regular linear equation. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 equals, on the right side, we're going to multiply all of those together. That's 28x. Now it's just solving this equation. Combine like terms on the left. Divide, divide both sides by 28. So x is equal to 13 over 28. If I go back to the original problem then and check, if I plug this number in for x, does that make either one of the denominators zero? It doesn't. So I know that this is not an extraneous solution. Here's our next problem. Once again, we want to get rid of these denominators. x plus 2 won't factor. 5x plus 10 can have a 5 factored out, so it's 5 times the quantity x plus 2. And then 3x plus 6 can have a GCF of 3 factored out, so it becomes 3 times the quantity x plus 2. Once again, we want to get rid of all these denominators because we don't want to work with fractions if we don't have to. And in equations, whatever you do to the left, you can do to the right. So let's multiply all these numerators by x plus 2. And as a note in this problem and other problems, I like to write really big to leave a lot of space. Otherwise, it gets really crammed together and it's hard to see. So next up, we'll simplify all these fractions, numerator to denominator, and most of the denominators are totally gone. The first one's all gone. The second denominator still has a 5, so we'll multiply all these numerators by 5. And then simplify this one. We've got one more denominator of 3, so we'll multiply all these numerators by 3. Those 3's cancel out. It looks like a mess. We have to pay attention to what's left. Here's our first numerator. Second numerator, those are going to get multiplied by each other. And then here is what's remaining in our last numerator. Multiplying these, the first one, 5 times 3 times 3x is going to be 45x. 4 times 3 is 12. And then from the right, 5 times 8 is 40. Just by factoring and multiplying to get rid of denominators, we can work through a problem now that doesn't have any fractions in it. Subtract 12 from both sides. So 45x is equal to 28. Divide both sides by 45, so x equals 28 over 45. Once again, if I plug this back into any of the original denominators, I don't get a zero, so I'm not worried about this being an extraneous solution. Next example. A lot like those other ones, we're going to start off by factoring all these denominators that need to be factored. This first one is a quadratic. It'll factor as x minus 7 times x plus 3. The second one will factor with a GCF, 2 times the quantity x plus 3. And then the last one won't factor at all. I want to get rid of denominators, so I'll multiply this first one by x minus 7, as well as all the others. Simplify. Those are gone. Those are gone. Then we're going to multiply to get rid of the x plus 3, so times x plus 3 in all the numerators. These x plus 3s cancel out. Those x plus 3s cancel out. So as I'm scanning through the denominators, I still see this 2. So we have one more thing to do. We're going to multiply them all by 2. And these 2s are going to cancel out. No more denominators. So here comes our first term. The 3 times x minus 7 is the second one. And then 1 times these will be the third one. So from here, we can come up with our equation. 
2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 times x minus 7, that's 3x minus 21 when we distribute. And on the right, we'll distribute that 2. It's going to be 2x plus 6. Now it's linear algebra to solve it. Combine like terms on the left, negative 21 plus 8, that's negative 13. I see that the x's are bigger on the left, so if we subtract 2x from both sides and then add 13 to both sides, we're left with x equals 19. I'll do the quick check again. If I plug this into any of those denominators, it doesn't make any of them zero, so I know it, this is not extraneous. It's not a solution that I got that actually doesn't work. Okay, here's our next one. This time we only have two fractions. There's a fraction on the left, and there's also a fraction on the right. In a problem like this, I can do the same kind of thing. I can multiply to get rid of those denominators, but essentially what ends up happening when you have a proportion like this, one fraction equal to another fraction, is you basically just cross multiply. Five times x plus two is equal to negative four times x minus three. So already we're rid of the fractions. Let's move our, all of our x's to the left. So add 4x to both sides. Move your numbers to the right. So subtract 10 from both sides. Lastly, divide both sides by 9. So we get x equals 2 over 9. It doesn't make those denominators 0. So there is our one and only answer. Next one. x plus 2. 3x plus 6 is going to become 3 parentheses x plus 2. And right now the 4 is over 1. We can't forget that that really is a fraction. All of the denominators, or two of the denominators, have the x plus 2. So we'll multiply the numerators by x plus 2. We'll make sure we do that to all of them. Cross off, cross off. The denominators need a 3 also because of the last one. So times 3, times 3 times 3, simplify those. Denominators are all gone. So there's our first term, second term, a little bit of multiplying in that one, and third term. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. Distribute that 12. That's 12x plus 24. And then on the right side, we just have that 7. Combine like terms on the left. 12x plus 33 equals 7. We'll subtract 33 from both sides, so 12x is equal to negative 26. Divide both sides by 12, negative 26 over 12, and then we can simplify that. Divide both numerator and denominator by 2, and we get negative 13 sixths. Plug it back in. It doesn't make any of those denominators equal to 0. The last example that we're going to look at, and what I noticed in this one is that there's no factoring in any of those denominators. We're going to go through the same process multiply all the numerators to get rid of denominators. So that m is gone. And we'll multiply all the numerators by 3. Those 3's cancel out. Those 3's cancel out. Distribute this 3. That's 3m plus 12 plus m times m is m squared. Then on the right, m times m is m squared. We are going to then subtract m squared from both sides. 3m plus 12 equals 0. Subtract 12 from both sides. Divide by 3, so m equals negative 4. And as I look at plugging this one back in, it doesn't make any of these denominators equal to 0. It makes that numerator equal to 0, but that's okay. So m equals negative 4 is our solution. Okay, here's the last problem. We will parentheses around denominators. This first one will factor. Factors as z plus 3 times z plus 1. So then we'll multiply to get rid of denominators. This is times z plus 3 in all these numerators. That's going to take care of a lot of things for us. It gets rid of those fractions, gets rid of those as well. Next, we're going to multiply by z plus 1 in all the numerators. Again, that serves a nice purpose for us, and then it gets rid of that z plus 1 gets rid of this z plus 1. Then we're left with the first term being 4z equals 2. And then we're going to distribute that 6. So that's 6z plus 6. Distribute that 4. So that's 4z plus 12. 
So we've got it down to a better spot now. If we um, subtract 4z from both sides, then that's gone. 0 is equal to 6z plus 18. Subtract 18 from both sides. Divide both sides by 6, and we get z equals negative 3. Now the problem with this negative 3 is that if we plug it back in to this denominator, we get a denominator of 0. We can't have that. And if I plugged it in here, I'd get a denominator of 0 also. So z equals negative 3 is what we got. This is an extraneous solution, so there are actually no solutions to this one at all. The only one we got didn't work, no solution.